Okay, well, I'll just go quickly through this. This was uh, just a, a traditional vegetable garden and you need a lot of space is, is what I suggested. These are various tomato cages because that's the plant that we're, you, we're accustomed to growing up. And these are, this is the one I said was, looked really great in the garden. We didn't paint ours red, but it looked really great, but it does, does rot. I'm not sure, maybe it lasted for seven or eight years. I'm not sure. This is the one I said might be made from a cattle panel, and they're, they're ones that should be available at the PV store if it's something you're interested in. I'll show you some other things later on that are made out of them. Um, pole beans, I think, are great. This is the, I said, we had a nail in the top of ours. Can you see my little cursor there? You can see that? Okay, so we had just a nail there, made a loop in the um, string. I, I always used um, jute because it's a natural um, fiber and it can just go in the compost with the rest of your, with your bean um, uh, vines at the end of the season. This is the one I said would make, it could be used uh, very effectively to provide shade on a balcony or, um, or if you had a space to plant in the ground, you can get some good shade by uh, growing up like that. And these are the ones in my garden. This is the, the gate. And these are the curly cues from the railing and the old ladder. And we, I think we were here. This is the zucchini growing up in the um, tomato cage. I did have to uh, gather the leaves and keep putting them in, they, of course, because they want to spread out on the ground. But, and, and growing things like melons or cucumbers or squashes on a fence. Um, not only does it save space on the ground, but it also keeps the fruit clean. Okay. All right, here's an idea too that I thought was really good. Um, this, is, this is showing cucumbers again, and partly because those vines don't get so long, but um, using the old pallet. And when I saw this, I thought maybe somebody's got an old baby gate that they could use for this. Um, but it does create shade. And so underneath you can see in this picture, they've got um, lettuces planted there. And so that's making, again, you're keeping the cucumbers off the ground and uh, you, you're putting in something that likes a bit of shade or not at least wants to be protected from the hot sun. Uh, and if you're looking for shade, but, and you want something really decorative, I think you can't beat red runner beans. The, that's the flower and they do produce beans which are pretty tough if you let them get big but if you eat them when they're um, small they are absolutely delicious they produce a green bean and they grow really really easily last year i planted some around the um, my bird feeder pole and i had to give them some string to climb up but uh, rather than finding some place to keep the pole in the summertime because we don't generally feed the birds in the summertime it looked great and i got beans from it. Um, kale is something that you plant early in the spring, but uh, it doesn't really get very big until later in the season. So around this plant could have been planted something like radishes when, when these were first put out. And by the time this plant is big enough to shade the radishes and cause any um, slower growth to them or anything, uh, they will have been harvested. And while they're growing, they've provided some um, ground cover for the around the kale. And so you've got two crops in the place of one. Now, square foot gardening is another way of saving space in the garden. And it was started by Mel Bartholomew. And he first wrote his first book about it in 1981. Uh, you can probably tell from his picture here that it was 1981 or maybe even in the 70s. But anyway, his garden is in uh, on a table, which makes it very um, easy to work with. And it's I don't know if that one is but when he started. A lot of the uh, uh, instructions are for a four foot square garden. And he claims that you can feed a family of four, four all summer in a garden that size. So how do you go about it? Oh, I don't know why this is here. Um, before, while we were talking, I should have had it in while we were talking about tomatoes before. If you don't know that this is a good way to plant tomatoes, uh, especially if they're leggy, 
but all along the stem that's under the ground, the plant will grow roots all along here. And so it makes a really healthy root ball, which should translate into a healthy plant and lots of tomatoes. So here's the square foot. Uh, people use whatever you can see here to mark the bed in square foot um, sections. And there are lots of charts you can find online to tell you how many of whatever kind of plant, like how many, I think it's one tomato plant in a square foot and uh, four lettuces or whatever. Um, but they're densely, densely planted. And uh, it keeps the weeds down. It, uh, you have a lot of food growing in a small space. And um, it also prevents a lot of the insects from um, pupating in the soil because a lot of the beetles and things that attack our crops, actually the little worms, when they're ready to pupate, they drop off into the ground and they, they spend that part of their life cycle in the soil. So if the soil is covered the way it is when, with that first picture you saw where it was just jam packed with plants, they can't do that. So it does reduce the number of pests you have. And they can have um, trellises and places for the, the plants to grow up as well. So if you were going to do square foot gardening, you really have to be careful about the um, soil. You have to provide really rich soil because the plants are so close together, they, they need the nutrients that are in really rich soil. And this is the uh, um, <clears throat> recipe that he suggests And as, you as something grows and you take it, you harvest it, you replace the plant with a scoop of compost. So you have to have enough of this compost to last throughout this growing season, not just in the spring. And our um, entrepreneurs have come up with these uh, seed um, planting guides and it shows you where to plant for any number of plants in a square foot. Oops. If they do need to be watered. Uh, they're likely not to get so much, get enough rain. And uh, even if we have rain, because again, the plants are close, so close together that um, you really need to keep the watering up. Um, these both have uh, watering systems. We have one that's similar to the one on the bottom, but we've used white PVC pipe and, um, and Bob just drilled some holes in it and it just drips. It's on a timer, so it comes on. If it's really, really hot every day, hot and dry every day, if it's not so bad and we're getting some rain every two or three days, and it comes on early in the morning and, and just as long as it takes to dampen the bed that we have. But it's, uh, and again, when the plants are so close together, once they get bigger than in these pictures, then that helps to keep the soil cool and helps to keep the water and the moisture in the soil as well. <clears throat> and uh, one person that uh, I've heard talk about uh, square foot gardening had a recycled bottle watering system. So she would cut the bottom off the bottle um, here, put a piece of screen over the cap here, and then screw the cap back on and bury it in the soil with the upside down with the, um, this part of it sticking up a little bit out of the soil. And then she would just water it, pour the water in the um, however many bottles she had in her area to uh, keep the soil moist. And the good thing about that is that the water is getting to the roots where they need it. And it's encouraging the roots to go down into the soil rather than staying at the top of the soil which is what happens if we just stand with a hose and spray a little bit and we think it's really wet, but if we go and check, it's maybe only half an inch down and the rest is dry. So that's a, that's a good uh, way of using up recycled bottles. So here's some square foot gardens that are more um, advanced and you can see how they do fill in the whole, the whole area. And I think you can see in this square, there's some little seedlings growing in here. 
Um, the idea is that if you were to harvest, uh, say, one of these, you had, I think for lettuce, it's four. If there were four heads of lettuce in here, as you harvested them, you fill up the spaces with new compost and you plant more. Um, I haven't read this anywhere, but if I was doing it, I would want to plant seedlings rather than the seeds, just to, so that it doesn't take so long. It gives yourself a week or so um, of less time it requires until the plant's a little bit big enough so that you can really see it. So it just speeds up how the, or shortens the um, harvest time in the square foot garden. Here's another one showing how you would, um, these, this is lettuce planted really close and it's quite possible they, they just cut some of the big leaves off and use it like mescaline mix. Whereas these are being allowed to grow to uh, a head. And on um, line, and um, Kate, I was thinking, or Kat, I was thinking perhaps um, you can take, are you, well, I was just wondering if you could take these um, websites down and put them somewhere so people could access them. Okay. But this is one of many that tell you how many, uh, like you could put um, two cucumbers or one tomato in a square foot. And there are all kinds of them. And actually the, um, the Square Foot Gardening Foundation has um, a website with a lot of this information on it. So if it's something you're interested in, and it does, you don't have to do it just on a four by four square uh, plot. You could have like two together in a four by eight foot plot or, or however big your plot. And then the other thing to consider is succession planning. And that means when one thing is finished, you start another. And that's included in the uh, method for square foot gardening too. So the things to consider if you're wanting to do succession planting is that you need to have enough seed so that you can continue to grow things on throughout the season uh, and not just have enough to plant in May. Uh, you need to have compost nearby because you're putting, you're never giving the soil a chance to recover. You have to keep adding, adding and adding as you take one thing out and put something else in. The timely harvest, I thought, when I read that, I thought that's interesting because I tend to do this oh, there's one little flower on there, I might get a bean from that, or whatever. If when it's pretty much past its best, pull it out and put something new in that's going to give you a good harvest a couple of weeks down the road or when however long it takes. And they suggested for sure plant seedlings and not seeds. Another way to do it is to make sure you have early, mid-season and late varieties. So if it was, uh, um, say, peas, something that has a very short uh, period from planting to harvest, something that's in the middle, and then something that takes a long time so that you, you've got, a, you've extended the season for your, for your peas or whatever it is you're growing. And some things that we plant in the spring are best germinated in cool soil. And so if you've harvested your peas and you'd like to have uh, or say your peppers, which you maybe harvest in August, but there's time for you to have a crop of lettuce or uh, spinach, and but they like cool soil to germinate. So you take the area that you want to plant the second crop in, and you wet it down and cover it with a board and leave it for a couple of days. And that will cool the soil down enough that you'll get good germination from your cool weather um, seeds or, or whatever you're putting in there. And then you plant your, say your seeds, and then you put the board back on. And when they, when you check occasionally, when you see them coming up, then you take the board off, but it just gives them that coolness that they need to get started. And then you'd be able to harvest lettuce and, and spinach maybe into September, October. Uh, I found out again that there's all kinds of charts online. This one is interesting. This one is um, a schedule for plant, when to plant your seeds. And uh, I've put the website there. The template is there for downloading and also her um, email if you want to contact her. 
And uh, interestingly enough, this is for the same zone that we're in. So the yellow line is the last spring frost, the red line is the first fall frost. And she shows over here, um, this is the information you find on the back of the seed pack, how many weeks in, you should be planting indoors before you're planting outdoors. And this is um, how many weeks before the last frost date that you can plant things out. So you'll see the things that are all along here. They can all be planted out before the first frost date because if they come up, it will not hurt them. But the things down here are things you can't put out until after the last frost date. So you can study this a bit more carefully, probably better than looking on here, but she hasn't, she's not talking about succession planting, but for example, here, the peas are, would be done. The ones she's planting would be harvested up until May 9th. So then you've got from that early May all the way over here, when for sure you could plant something else in there, something like peppers or tomatoes because you can't plant them out until after the last or the last frost date anyway. So I think this could be, this chart could be used to figure out your succession planting. If you did the same kinds of figuring for that she's done for these things with all these other plants, then um, let me see if I, I didn't figure this out, but okay, carrots. I have planted carrots after I pulled out the bean plants and still had a crop of carrots in the fall. So carrots, she says, you should plant those directly into the garden and they should be ready by the end of June. You could be harvesting at them, harvesting, harvesting them. Um, and then you could, oh, those are the carrots, pardon me, but the beans, where does she got her beans? I'm confused. Um, here she's got pole beans. They, they didn't, but yeah, she hasn't got regular beans here, but the um, bush beans, I think mine are usually done by, oh, mid-September anyway. And then I was able to put the carrots where the beans had been, and I still had some in, well into the fall because they'll keep going long after the first frost. So this, you could use this to help you figure out your succession planting. Here's another one, and this one is also available online. Now it's Australian, but um, you, you might have to adjust, but the neat thing about this is if you click on these little, uh, oh, that didn't work. If you click on those, um, these little uh, triangles, um, it will come up with a D or an H or a G. So the G for her means that they started in the greenhouse. The T means they were planted outside. The D means they were planted in the ground and the H is when they're harvested. So then you can do with all, do the same thing with all of your um, things you're planting in your vegetable garden and, and it'll tell you when you should, what you put in when it would be harvested and then you know how much room you've got to plant other things. How much time, it's all in timing. And here's another one. This is an American one. And again, she's got here, you know, the lettuce is going from April to June and then the peppers go in and they're harvested by mid-August and then Oh, oh, pardon me, by September, and then, she, then she's planted radishes. So the things that she's planted later in the season, spinach, um, radishes, lettuce, peas, all those kinds of things, arugula, I can't read what that is, oh, Asian greens, and more arugula. So you can get second crops of a lot of things by succession planting. We can't do as many things as you could if we were living a little further south because a lot of our early crops would be going out in March or even late February. But we still can make more use of the garden doing the succession planting. 